hunting for easter eggs is a really fun thing to do to spend more time in a video game world, but sometimes it's a little bit much. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the six hardest easter eggs of 2021 that seemed impossible. Starting off at number six, it's Halo Infinite's Gaming Lair and the Big Sandwich. Now, there's actually really a lot of fun easter eggs in Halo Infinite's campaign. There's a whole lot to see if you're willing to take the time to find them. Some are just kind of out in the open, but at least with these two, they're hidden in incredibly obscure little spots that are basically impossible to find without a guide. The first one you can find is this big sandwich, which is hidden away in a cave south of the spire. There's a random pillar you can grapple up to, and if you look up, you'll notice this tiny space between the rocks that you can just barely fit through. Grapple again, and there you go, you're in the giant sandwich room. Why is it here? I have no idea. It's just a really weird Easter egg, but it's pretty detailed at least. Honestly, it's just funny to see a giant sandwich. The second secret room you can find appears in region four in this hexagonal metal tunnel in the southeast. There's an incredibly small gap between the rocky ceiling and the metal walls. Yep, you guessed it. Grapple up there, you find this hidden room containing a flat screen TV, some folding chairs, and an original Xbox. It's a throwback Easter egg in more ways than one. Remember when games used to hide Xboxes in them all the time? Maybe I'm just thinking of Ninja Gaiden. Either way, it's a pretty funny little secret that's crazy hard to find. At number 5 is Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, the secret room and the VIP escape ending. It is not a surprise that a game like Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach would have some pretty crazy easter eggs. I mean the whole series is easter egg crazy and pretty much every previous entry in the franchise has at least one or two big secrets hidden in them. And yeah, this game has it all. Secret endings, secret rooms, ciphers written on walls, mysterious messages, I mean, it's all here and it's pretty tough to find. We were split on which secret to include here because they're all pretty difficult to find in their own way, but the hidden fifth ending and the secret record room are weird enough that we feel they both deserve a mention. The secret room is probably the more well-known one at this point, but it's possible to find this strange room hidden behind a false wall all the way back at the beginning of the game. It requires multiple upgrades to actually access, like you need the voice box upgrade and the claw upgrade to open the gates, clearing the way to this place as well as the phase camera to actually access access the secret, but if you've got all that, then you can backtrack through the supply tunnels back to where you first encountered Monty at the beginning of the game. Pass through the smoke, go through the two gates, you find a dead end with a strange note that gives you a clue for what to do there, take out the phase camera, take a picture of the empty wall. If you do it correctly, a door will appear leading to a creepy room that's a big reference to the previous game in the series called Sister Location. The main reason to check this room out is you can listen to these secret retro discs here. You can only see them if you use the ocular upgrade, so you pretty much have to do everything in this game if you want to find all the secrets in this spot. Now beyond that, there's a standard secret ending in the game that involves delving into a mysterious sinkhole, but that's actually a more obvious ending than the one we're talking about here. The VIP ending is more of a joke because it's a callback to when you try to escape through the VIP lounge near the start of the game. Freddy explains that the emergency exit can only be accessed by VIPs, which he admits is not a very good system. You'd think that things would end there, but it's actually possible to get VIP access. All you have to do is get most of the collectibles in the game. From what we can tell, you need to open about 60 prize boxes which are found around the complex, along with 6 golden plush dolls. If you get them all, which is more time consuming than anything if you've got the ocular upgrade at least, then it's actually possible to escape using the emergency exit. And number four is Metroid Dread's early bomb against Kraid. It's definitely a smaller thing than some of the previous entries, but how you go about seeing this is what makes it so interesting. In Metroid Dread, it's possible to see a special animation when fighting Kraid by doing some classic Metroid-style sequence breaking. The whole trick here is that you need to go into the Kraid boss with the Morph Ball bombs, which you actually acquire normally a little bit after you fight Kraid. The key to pulling off this sequence break is is you've got to be able to survive going through this superheated area. Normally this spot would kill you before you're able to get anywhere, at least at this point in the game, but with some clever planning it's actually possible to get through the area. What you have to do is make sure that you have three energy parts before going into the hot zone. Now normally that wouldn't be very helpful, but halfway through this superheated area you can find an energy part, and if you manage to get four then you'll earn another energy tank, which just so happens to also max 
maxes out your health. From there, you sneak through another Emmy area to get the bomb upgrade, but at this point, the hard part's over. Now you just continue along the critical path until you face off against Kraid, and when you get to the second stage of the fight, just roll up into a ball, use the Morph Ball Launcher, and shoot yourself into one of Kraid's nasty spike shooting orifices. It's pretty gross, but it's an effective way to quickly take this dude down. Pulling off some of these sequence breaking tricks sometimes feels like you're cheating the game, and therefore doing something the developers don't want you to do, but with this game, the fact that you can take out the boss in a special way that's only possible if you sequence break means they clearly intentionally made it so you could get certain items like the Morph Ball Bomb early, and that is awesome. And number three is Deltarune Chapter 2's Secret Egg. Toby Fox, the creator of Undertale and Deltarune, really loves his secrets. Undertale, in particular, was jam-packed with weird stuff to find and alternate routes to pursue, but with Deltarune, it seemed like he wanted to create a more focused narrative that didn't have quite so many branching paths. That doesn't mean he didn't hide a few secrets in there, though. There are secret bosses, literal Easter eggs to find, uh, and an entire alternate route to uncover in Chapter 2. That alternate route, similar to the genocide route from the original Undertale, is absolutely absolutely nuts on its own, but it's so elaborate that it's hard to describe as an easter egg, especially when, as we said earlier, there are actual honest to god eggs that are hidden in these games. There was one in chapter 1 of Deltarune, and big surprise, there's another one in this game. To find it, you have to enter Cyber City and get to a point in the game where you join up with Noel. There's an area where you have to hit these buttons and control the stoplights. Uh, instead of going forward like you're supposed to, instead hit 9 and 5 stoplights, and then run straight down and to the right then down again then to the left all of that leads to what seems like a dead end there's a dumpster and some graffiti on the wall that gives you a very cryptic hint the room between there is a room between for most people that might as well be meaningless but if you've already found the easter egg in the first game then you know what to do if you enter and exit this room over and over again eventually you'll enter an entirely new room again it seems like there's not really anything to do here but there's actually an invisible figure standing behind the tree that you can talk to now, just say yes when you talk to them, and you get an egg as a key item. There are a few things that you can do with the egg back in the light world, but for now, the actual purpose of these eggs are a mystery. The series has a massive fan base, so any mystery the game throws out is going to be solved eventually, which is good because there's no way I'd be able to figure out how to find this egg on my own. And number two is Psychonauts 2. You just have to see it. Uh, truly a bizarre one that I have no idea how anyone originally found. In Psychonauts 2, if you return to the level Hollis's Hot Streak, uh, the casino one, after you beat the game, then you can find an incredibly weird little animation hidden in the game world. How you unlock this whole thing sounds completely random, but stick with me here. You need to travel to the maternity ward area, then pull yourself to the area on top of the entrance. From there, you you have to grab a pen with your psychic powers and then shoot at the sign that says ward under the big roulette wheel. If you do all that, then this little animation plays which depicts, and I cannot believe I am saying this, but a pregnant Raz being gurneyed into an emergency room. There's dialogue too, uh, so if you ever wanted to hear lines like, Lobato's consciousness is about to erupt out of your psychic uterus, well, this is for you. It's probably one of the weirdest easter eggs of all time, and the only reason not higher in this list is because of how relatively easy it is to find compared to the absolute madness of the next entry. The only clue to explain any of this is what you do here, like you use a pen on a ward sign. This crazy animation thing was most likely created by Pen Ward, the guy who created stuff like Adventure Time, and that's further reinforced by his name appearing in the credits. Why he did this and for what reason, uh, we have no idea, but it's certainly something. And finally at number one is Inscription's truly bonkers secret alternate reality game. Inscription is a game about secrets, and just progressing through it normally is kind of like solving an alternate reality game in some ways. There's an element of danger and mystery to everything you do in the game, and it just has a totally unique atmosphere that's both creepy and paranoid. They keep piling on more and more secrets, and every time you peel back a layer of what's going on, you find more strangeness underneath. But that's only the topmost layer of mystery in the game. When you get to the actual Easter egg ARG elements, that's when things get really crazy, because very 
rarely have we seen an ARG that just feels like an extension of the game itself, and that's pretty much what happens here. Inscription slowly gets more and more meta as the game goes along, and after a while they just start straight up dropping secrets on you. Like if you manage to fight the mycologist in Act 3, which is only found by clicking on a hidden arrow in a certain location, then when you defeat him, you get a cipher key. There's a different section of the game where some secret codes appear if you play the game in letterbox mode instead of standard. These are the kinds of secrets we're talking about here, folks, and we're only just getting started. If you want to decipher some of the secret messages in the game, you have to do obscure stuff like modify your save file to add in story events. Another part of the puzzle requires you to play an incredibly specific sequence of cards in Act 1. Solving all this stuff eventually gave people an address to a fake website called Data Storage Manufacturing, and three people who put in the correct address on the site got a literal floppy disk in the mail that each contained a clue to the final secret. So basically, solving this whole thing would be e e utterly impossible without an entire community of people trying to figure it out. Probably the people most responsible for putting this all together are the users of the Daniel Mullins Discord server. Like, they're the ones responsible for creating the Google document I'm pulling this information off of. I mean, just look at this information. It's like 60 pages of stuff. The secrets in this game are really next level because unlike most alternate reality games this one's directly tied into the game rather than being some outside thing that just exists to build up hype we've got nothing but respect for the people who managed to piece all this stuff together because the whole thing's about as close to impossible as an easter egg can get and that's all for today leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week so click subscribe and don't forget to enable all notifications as always we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.